Hi everyone, another week done and dusted. I hope yours was better than mine. We have finally had rain here after nearly 12 months with barely a drop in my region. So while I love the rain, the old injuries in my body done so much and I've not been feeling so crash hot as a result. I know people think pain makes you feel alive, but let me assure you, there is nothing like the agony of someone grating your bones inside your body to make you believe you are in hell, and this is your eternal torture. See, this is where real life inspires my writing, and on that matter, let's get to today's quickie. So, this week's topic is all about playlists, more specifically, playlists for my books. This was another topic chosen by one of my beaters, and what she really wanted to know was if I have certain playlists for particular books. The answer is yes, I do. Nearly every book I write has a playlist and I will routinely listen to those songs while working on that book. Some playlists can contain entire albums by the same person. Others can be a real random mix of songs that just happen to inspire scenes in that book. Take the playlist for Spectra, for instance. Because that book started off in a gothic club and quite a few scenes take place there, I basically listened to The Perfect Circle to get the feel for Tenebrose. Then in scenes from Bay's point of view, I listened to Chevelle. And for when Spectra went to Bay's house, it was Gregorian chants and Enigma to inspire the atmosphere. So some songs were inspirational, others just background to create the scene. It's the same again with Wraith. On top of the playlist, I also tend to have one song for each book that as soon as I hear it will take me back to that world. That's because it's the song I basically see that would be used for the movie trailer, I guess. Um, for Black Mark, it was um, Of These Chains by Wraith. Uh, for Phased, it was Dark Horse by Katy Perry. So there is always one song usually on the playlist which will actually take me back into that world without issue and is very, very easily because I create the scenes for the trailer or for some of the movie in my mind with those songs connected to it. So they'll always bring me back there. Okay, this week I've continued editing of Shadow and Light and started publishing Sin's Child onto Reddish. I've decided the title for Sin's Child needs to change. I'm still not certain what I like instead, but I'm thinking something along the lines of the Zilla Princess. Although I did think maybe just calling it Calypso. That way, if I ever decide to write a sequel, let's say on King Zilla, then I could possibly call that one Queenzilla. And if there was another one possibly on Queenie, then it could just be called Queenie. Either way, um, it, the, the title needs to change. So I'll get around to that and I'll fix that up and let you know when it happens. I've also started writing the extra blog posts for The Sin's Child. So I know that when I first published it on Wattpad, everyone really liked the blog and kept saying that it would have been great if the blog continued throughout the actual uh, book. And so I've taken that feedback on board and I'm doing that. So as I go with the editing, I'm actually adding more blog posts from Kelly into the book. So those extras will be in the Radish version only. And then if I ever publish it, obviously in the other version. I'm also including in that uh, the comments written by The Watcher, Sin Rocks, and The Penny Drops. Hmm. I might change Penny's username to maybe Penny Dreadful. I don't know, Penny Drops, Penny Dreadful. It's much of a match in this, but we'll work it out. I've written a new chapter for Wraith and made a start on the next, and also finished a chapter I'd forgotten I started for Regret Me. I also wrote a thousand words on a chapter for Brink. All up on those three books, I have managed to write over 4,000 words this week. I'm 
pretty happy with that. It's better than I've probably managed in the last three to four months. So whether that means I'm finally getting out of my work funk or things have just gotten worse, <laughs> I'm still not, I don't know. But hey, I'm writing it again and that's all that matters, isn't it? Okay, so next week's topic is going to be about how many books I have on my work in process work in progress list. Um, I think when I did the Trello segment a few weeks ago and people actually got to see my boards, they realised there was a hell of a lot of books there that I've never really told anyone about. So one of the questions that came through was, can you talk about those other works and what genres they are and all that sort of stuff? Um, so that's what I'm doing. And I'm just going to call it the book data blog, but that's what it's all going to be about. So this week's questions, not very, very many this week, so we're going to get through this really, really quickly. Question one, why doesn't Ty tell Mess that they are compatible until he's in her the second time? Also, why wouldn't he explain that she will get pregnant until it's happening? Um, I think the reason he's never told her that they are compatible is because he had his own fear about them being intimate together. And it wasn't until the events of the gauntlet that he decided that he, he needed to stop resisting them. I think he decided it beforehand, um, but because he wanted to make sure that she was seen as something more than a toy in, his, in their people's eyes before he went any further with her, that's why it waited until it happened. Um, and I just, I don't think it occurred to him to have that conversation. I mean, he's known for a while that they're compatible, um, but I just don't think he grasps how naive she is to the whole thing. And, you know, she's still very young. He's over 250 years old. So there's things that aren't going to occur to him to have discussions about just because she's young, because, hey, he's been there, done that, dealt with all of this probably centuries ago, um, and it doesn't just doesn't occur to him that that's something that she's going to have to now deal with. So um, that's probably why those conversations haven't happened until now. Question two. With Of Shadow and Life, do you have any extra chapters on the horizon that you are adding to? Um, we're getting towards the latter end of the book now, and... While there's nothing that I want to significantly change in the ending of the book, uh, I will be adding in another chapter from Tynan's point of view at the end of the book before the epilogue. Um, and I also want to add in something from Messina's point of view when she's in the Wisp Walk. Um, so those are definitely things that are coming in, but they'll be basically right towards the end. Uh, there are, the Muse and I have been having discussions. She actually really wants to change the whole ending to the book. Um, for those of you who've read it before, mainly around, uh, what happens at the institution. Um, so we're still having discussions about whether that's a viable thing. I think right now my idea is to just go through edit, add in those few extra chapters at the end, and then possibly write an alternative ending. And if that happens, if I write the alternative ending, let my beta readers read it and see what they think of it, see which one they think it should have gone with, and that might be the one that I get published with later on. I might even put the alternative ending up on Rubbish. But yeah, it just, it basically comes down to one event at the institution that the muse thinks, hang on, this, this chick has a lot of power here. Why wouldn't she have lost control of that power and used it when that stuff happened? So that's the, the conversations that we've been having and I'm not sure what the answer is going to be yet. So we're still working on that. Question three. In or Shadow of Light, are you adding more sex scenes from what you posted on Wattpad? 
Uh, I think there's a few little extra tidbits, but not very many. I, I don't like to overdo it in books. We don't want to desensitize people to, to the point where they're like, oh, I've got another one, let's just flick past that. Which I think happened with Succumb for some people, that it just got too much and, okay, let's just move on with that, with the Hierarch series. So I'm trying really, really hard not to have that happen with my other books. And for that reason, I don't think I will add in any more. I think there's enough there, but I may just make them a bit more detailed and a, maybe a little bit more interesting, I guess is one way of putting it. Okay, so that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to send your questions in for next week's topic by Wednesday so that I can answer them next Sunday. And if you have a suggestion for a future topic, feel free to post that in as well. Uh, you can find the links to ask me questions below. Other than that, have a great week. Thanks for watching. Bye.